So we're gonna get this to fall more this way. What is that sound? Uh, Let's go over there, because they've got to want to know what that is. Oh, blue's on ascent. Blue's on ascent. Yep. Oh. I think you upset him. <laughs> He's like, oh, somebody else speaks my language. <laughs> my dog, which is like half the size of blue over there, literally chases down airplanes. Like they're <laughs> 10,000 feet in the sky and it, they need to leave our area. <laughs> and I think blue is barking at earthworms because there's nothing over there. Like nothing. <laughs> 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 What's going on over here? Chris, I was just thinking how you were saying not more than three seconds ago, hold on, hold on, we missed a couple of videos. And I'm thinking like, what did we miss? And you said, well, the first rock. And mind instantly went into, we always talk about the first rock and how it sets the mood for the whole day. Mm -hmm. So let's not neglect the second rock. You know, the second rock oh. has to have some importance. Sorry, sorry, some second rock. Some importance as well, right? Like, I guess. And it's maybe the third rock, and maybe the fourth, and the tenth, and so on and so on. But, like, <laughs> so today it's all about the second rock. The second rock is really gonna set the whole <laughs> mood for the day. And here's why. Come with me. <laughs> We've set our spillstone rock. And very rarely do we get a piece of granite that has this type of vibe going on. But it is nothing without the second rock. This rock would do literally nothing without the second boulder. And the second boulder is going to be the frame rock for this. So we're going to re-pitch this. Even though this thing was carved out like this. Like look at how far back we carved all of this out. Thinking the waterfall would come back into here. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to try to get this waterfall to sweep more this way. And drop like this because we're going to change the viewing area down in here. And if I can get this drop, this waterfall, or if we can get this waterfall, I put a lot of emphasis on me there. And if it doesn't work when I say we, then it's our fault. Oh, um, good. Yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. This rock's gonna fall this way. We always look for these natural high spots. And what I was saying about this piece of granite is it's got a lot of characteristic with these little drops and stuff here. So we've got this natural high spot over here. If we put the level on here, you can see that this is considerably higher than that. Now, if I put the level in here, it levels off. If you really want to try to understand where the water is going to go, look at the air gap underneath this, and that's where all the water is going to be. What I don't want to see is all that water funnel through here, because I know it's just going to go boom and then shoot way out here. So we'll come in here and probably find a small little stone at some point and block this off, yep. pushing more water over to this, because I'd really like to see it spread out all the way from here mm -hmm. to here. So we'll just need some type of little, I mean, it could take gravel technically. The problem with gravel is it'll never stay. So we're going to look for a split piece of granite. Some type of little shard or something that can go in here. Next piece has got to come in here and I'm hoping it comes in close to the same height as this. We just need to be higher than this. Yep. So we'll come in here and then the next piece I want to drop in I think is either this one over here or maybe even drop in that bowl that we were talking mm -hmm. about and then figure out where that piece goes in. Yep. Next the rock after that will probably be this stone in here. We were looking at how this drops <laughs> drops. We were looking at how this drops off to here and it's a little little bit of a high step so you grabbed a great piece from the office over there and we'll bring and I want to like either cut it in or we'll probably set it away a little bit because what I don't want to do is try to get it underneath this mm -hmm. so if we set it out then we can fill the joint with another flat stone or some crushed granite or whatever but I definitely want it to cantilever out over this reservoir a little bit and try to shrink down the footprint of this 12 block system so today's goal would be well I think by lunch our goal should be to find those earthworms Right? Like, I think I think we need to help Blue. Shut <laughs> but get the bottom reservoir finished and then start moving up into the stream. So if, by lunch we can get this kind of buttoned up, pumps, plumbing, bowls, that kind of stuff. Then after lunch we can really focus on doing the stream. Good, makes sense. Okay, so we just wrapped up lunch. Why are we digging a trench here, Chris? Well, we've got one uh, patio pond, a large patio pond there. We're gonna put another one here and then kind of a game day decision where we put the third one. We're gonna run the plumbing inside the liner coming from our two inch lines. We'll manifold here then come this way. Right, so the liner will go, the plumbing will go, we'll cover it with gravel. Inside the trench, exactly. All right, and Brian's pulling out the big guns here. You just gonna chop down the tree and get rid of it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes.
<laughs> what is that? <laughs> Battery's gonna die. Say something witty super fast. Something witty super fast. No, you could have done it way faster. <laughs> something witty super fast. Okay. Something witty super fast. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Brian over here foaming up the waterfalls. Super, super important when doing these kind of big gravel pockets back behind and then doing the bib liners behind the waterfalls is to make sure that you get all that void space over top of all the rock and gravel, but also in between these cracks and crevices because water can squeak back behind all of these rocks on both sides and you can sometimes forget about those interstitial spaces. Gaps, gaps gaps between the rock and the <laughs> liner. So you just really want to take your time finishing it all up, then firing up the waterfall and nothing comes over the spillstone. Fortunately for us, Ryan has foamed thousands, literally thousands of waterfalls in his day. So he kind of has a really good idea of where the water is going to go. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> go ahead. We carved this out way back here. And so we have this huge gap and we set these boulders back off this way. So instead of folding all of this liner all the way back up like this and then back filling all this with soil, we just put the gravel that does a couple things one it saved us a ton of time two when you fold that liner all the way back like this and then backfill with soil you get all these crazy folds in there and it can make it kind of difficult to hide the liner back up in here so we just filled it with gravel so if we were to turn this on right now nothing would come over the top of this rock everything would just fall down into here so right now I'm gonna foam back behind all of these rocks over in here and these rocks over in here making sure nothing goes to my left and right and then this area we do what we call bib liner and a bib liner is just a scrap piece of liner I'm gonna cut to the shape of these rocks in here, place it on top, and then foam all those joints all the way around. And if you wanted, you could also then put more foam on top, but if I foam just the joints, the idea is water can't get underneath the joints. The liner will keep the water from penetrating through this area and force it up and over this area. Next step is to cut that piece of liner, and then we'll foam all of that. One thing that I made a mistake on a, ver a number of times in the beginning when I was just starting to foam waterfalls was this area back in here, Bri. Fabric's at? Where the fabric's at. Could so I'm gonna get out of the way. Can you kind of explain yeah. to the audience? So that liner is gonna come. I want that liner, I'll probably cut this fabric away because what's gonna happen is this fabric's not gonna allow the foam to contact with the liner as much and water will weep through that area. So I'm gonna take that liner and cut it way back here and then foam that joint together. I'll probably take this fabric, cut it and like fold it back over this. But that's the area you're probably talking about. You really wanna yes. make sure you get like where this joint is yeah, back right perfect. here. So you wanna foam all of that back in here, not just this area because if water gets through, it'll go through that yep. space and then it's just gone forever. Yeah, lovely. But that is a definite point of failure that I have made that mistake a couple of different times where it really stinks to pull sure. it back all back out. So it's important to point that out to the viewer. We got quite as far as we wanted to yesterday. We ran into some difficulties up in here, an enormous amount of tree roots and not really live tree roots. Like there was some kind of old tree in here from probably 15, 20 years old because they were pretty rotted, but they were thick, giant tree roots. You can see the remains all over the, pa the yeah. patio everywhere. We had to cut down a section of the tree. We got to get that done. So anyways, we didn't get as far as we wanted to yesterday. The one thing I noticed yesterday though is how important it is to have like one more guy on the job site that could be helping with detail type stuff. Like the two of us definitely have a good vision on where we need to be but it's the little things that take all the time like the plumbing back over here like I probably spent a good half hour 45 minutes just doing the fittings coming through the liner to come into the vault over there and we're still not done like I want to cut out the grass and all that kind of stuff doing the edges up in here the ball valves back over in there even this foam stuff like this will take a half an hour to do this correctly yeah where if we had one other guy he could be working on that why we could be setting boulders and keep moving so mm -hmm. I really appreciate it when we have our whole team here yeah and it's fun, just me and you, you know, just pump there, Hanson. But uh, <laughs> one extra guy that really knew what they were doing would be great. And it's fun when Greg comes out, but it's just fun when he comes out. <laughs> yeah. So I think today- He's always working on the business. Yeah, he actually is doing some pretty important stuff right mm -hmm. now. And I mean that sincerely. But today, I think at the very least, have everything running. Let's kind of show him a little bit how we changed the design, just because as we thought through it, it didn't make sense the way we originally wanted to do it. Sure. You know, we brought these pieces out. I think it's important that customers understand that how 
organic this process actually is. And contractors. And contractors, yes. right? Yep. We knew we wanted to use the bowls in some fashion. We weren't sure exactly how we were gonna use them. Mm -hmm. A bowl screamed to go right here when we first looked at the existing stream, like in between this hemlock and this hemlock, just kind of pouring in there. But once we started putting stuff together, as much as I thought 100% we'd put one here, once we put that one down there, this one clearly didn't make any sense anymore, in my opinion, right? It's, it's, I agree, it was just too much, too heavy with the bowls on yeah, one side. We have that big bowl down there, another one 10 feet away from it right here, and then that close to this one wasn't gonna make sense, and we kinda wanna alternate them. So right now the vision is one there, I love this one here, which will get planted up with a ton of aquatics, and patience, that kind of stuff. You've got the light in there, which will look really cool. And then we're gonna take the big one again, and probably stick it up here in this corner, and let it feed the headwaters of our waterfall. And I kinda like how they're zigzagging back and forth, yep. where if we put the one down there, the one in the middle, and then one up here, all three on the same side would have looked really ridiculous. Yeah. I think that's the best word for it. I, I agree. You know, but which is part of the reason we don't do drawings, because we would have drawn in that bowl right there. Yep. And then when we wanted to remove it, we would have had to do a change order and all this stuff, and, and it just doesn't work that way. Even the way we're kind of shaping the stream, we brought out all this moss rock thinking we were gonna use the moss rock, but the pieces of moss rock we have are way too chunky and angular to match with any of this granite. So we're really using the granite back to its fullest potential. This guy was used to be over in this corner, mm -hmm. laying flat, this was the top. Now standing this guy up totally changes the way that piece looks yep. and makes this look now like it's been here for 100 years growing up and around it, yep. which looks cool. And it's the right height for the berm coming out yeah. too. It's all the scale. Yep. So I like that we did that. We also put in the big step over here. We had no idea we were gonna even need to do that. But as we were looking at this step that came down into the lawn, yeah. it was more of a 10 inch drop off, not your six and a half to seven and a half foot step. Mm -hmm. And so dropping this guy in makes a whole lot more sense. And now it becomes much more inviting to come over to this side of their existing fire pit, especially when we put in that crushed granite down over here. And I don't think that was ever part of the design either. Like let's just kind of keep evolving with this. Mm -hmm. Adding some crushed granite will be effortless. So keep it organic guys. Let your vision adapt throughout the process. What I always tell our customers is we need to agree on where it's going to start and where it's going to stop. And what happens in between those two places is really up to us. We took away some of the waterfalls that actually used to be in there, making the waterfall up on top now much bigger because the waterfall in the middle was never visible from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now we get a waterfall that's 10 inches taller that's aiming towards the house, which is so much more important. What do you think, Penny? Blue's the screamer. That's true. What do you think, Blue?